creating audio from text with Spring, new video tools, which are, which are kind of interesting, help me earn a tenth of a cent <laughs> with my custom GPT, and the usual collection of silly tweets, toots, and skeets. Welcome to Tales from the Jar Side. Welcome, everybody. My name is Ken Cousin. This is my weekly newsletter, and this, of course, is the video version of the newsletter. Don't feel like reading it. That's fine. I'll be happy to read it to you, along with director's cut information, background information, stuff like that. The subtitle this week says, Sketch Artist Holds Up a Drawing of a Single Straw. A camel in a wheelchair sobs, Yes, officer, that's him. Yeah, I know. It's an old one, but I like it. Welcome, fellow Jarheads, to Tales from the Jar Side, the Cousin IT newsletter for the week of January 1st through 7th, 2024. Today is... Oh, no. I forgot to change the date. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, this was the week of January 8th through 15th. Sorry about that. Today is the 15th, of course. This week I taught my classes making new Java features work for you. So that's Java up through version 21 and managing your manager, which was fun on the O'Reilly Learning Platform. So I had a good time, but oh well. Here's the regular info message. Regular readers of and listeners to, and of course video viewers of this newsletter are affectionately known as jarheads and are far more intelligent, sophisticated, and attractive than the average newsletter reader or viewer or listener. If you wish to become a jarhead, please subscribe using the button on the newsletter. That's usually our cue to check in with the YouTube channel. Here is the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at Tales from the Jar side. You can see that I'm up to 1.11k subscribers. I actually, this morning, I hit 1111, which was kind of fun. And then I lost one. So now I'm back to 1110. But I'll get back to 11.11 someday. I actually did hit a, a significant milestone in the sense that I have 150 uploaded videos, which, boy, that sounds like a lot. I know it's nothing compared to what I'm aiming for, but making progress. Now, the interesting video this week that I'm going to want to talk to you about is this new one called How to Create Audio from Text Using Spring and OpenAI. That's interesting because a week ago I did a video on creating audio from text, but this time I used the Spring framework to do it, and that's really significant because there's a lot of cool stuff involved in that. So let me go back to the newsletter itself. So here is that section on creating audio from text. It says the latest video on the companion YouTube channel is called exactly as we said. And you see the nice little robot there with the voice waves coming out of it. I don't know. It looks a little harsh. Looks like it's shouting more than reading. I don't know if I'm wild about that thumbnail. May have to play around with that. At any rate, the idea was is I went to the video and I clicked on my little plug in to say, hey, Claude, give me a bullet point summary of this video. And here's the summary. And I also translated it into, of course, an audio file. Because after all, what's the point, you know, I mean, of, of being able to create audio from text if you don't use it. So let me play the audio from text and see if that works. Here are five key bullet points summarizing the video. Demonstrates using Spring Boot and OpenAI's text-to-speech API to convert text into audio MP3 files. Maps the OpenAI API request response format into a Java record class for easy access. Implements a Spring HTTP exchange interface to call the API with proper annotations. Saves the returned audio byte array into an MP3 file for playback. Shows how to add request validation and bundle it all into a fast starting GraalVM native image executable. And there you go. Now, I hope that came through on the audio. Uh, if not, I can. Actually, now that I think about it, I'll just take the MP3 file and add it directly to this video. So now I think I can be confident that it's in there just the way I want it to be. That's actually a pretty good summary of what's inside the video. So if you're interested in that, be my guest. The voice that I chose out of the OpenAI documentation is of the six available. I chose the one called Fable, which has that 
very moderate, light British accent to it, makes it sound authoritative to American ears. As I pointed out that any British jarheads are now laughing at me at that statement, but hey, you're welcome to do so as long as you do it in an authentic British accent. Uh, the code, if you're interested, is in the GitHub repository called OpenAI Client. Here's that repo, just in case you're curious. It has tons of stuff in it. Uh, I've got chat in there. I've got Dolly image generation. I've got the whisper audio transcriptions. I've got, and now I have the text to speech part as well. So there's a lot of uh, interesting information in there. I tend to refer to that project and the associated presentations as Spring with AI without the Spring AI project. And I'm doing that partly because tomorrow actually is a big day for me. I'm having my first demonst my first course on the Spring AI project. And the Spring AI project is currently sitting at version 0 0.8. And it's like, oh my goodness. Yeah. So what could go wrong? Well, I will let you know next week. Let's move on. A section called new video tools. Now, you probably don't care about this, but it's kind of inside baseball. But if you're curious about what's going on under the hood, the normal video tool I use to make these videos is called ScreenFlow. I've been using it from the beginning. ScreenFlow allows me to, well, you can see, capture my screen, makes it very easy for me to put myself in the corner and remove the background so it looks like I'm talking in front of the whatever the screen background is. It cleans up the audio for me so that it levels the mic for all the different sections. And it's got this ability to put text, you know, sweeping in and leaving again, which I tend to use a lot when I'm post-processing this. But I'm actually kind of hitting the limits on what I can do with that thing. And I wanted to go beyond. So I wound up, I also, as I say here, I'm a little concerned that the parent company of the spring, the Spring ScreenFlow product, which is called uh, which is called Telestream, I don't think is all that big on maintaining this product anymore. I mean, I haven't seen any upgrades in quite a while. I haven't seen any hints that there's anything coming. I'm not sure what's going on, and I thought I better look around. So I wanted to use a really powerful tool. One of the really nice ones to learn is called DaVinci Resolve. And that's like state of the art and used in a lot of professional organizations. And of course, when I open it up, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> you know, it's beyond anything I know how to do. But the first thing I noticed about it is that it expects you to import in all your video. In other words, it's not there to record video. It's just an editor, not just. I mean, it, it's the one of the most powerful editors around, comparable to the Adobe tools and everything. But you do need to import your your video. And while ScreenFlow does both the recording and the editing, it doesn't really play nicely with others. If I export it, I'm not going to get individual segments. I'm going to get one giant video all, with already having all the processing in it. So that's kind of awkward. Well, another YouTuber I saw introduced me to the tool called Tela, which is at tela.tv of all places. And this is a simple screen recorder that allows you to record multiple segments and change the layout on a uh, on a clip by clip basis. Although these days I think you can change layouts even within an internal clip. It's got this nice zoom capability in it and it's a pretty good with the audio as well. The only downside for me at the moment is that it doesn't do any text or anything like that. But my plan is, of course, is to record a bunch of video and export it and then import it into DaVinci Resolve. And then I could learn how to use DaVinci Resolve to do all kinds of stuff. Well, the video I just talked about, the one about creating audio from text using Spring, is my first attempt to follow that process. And I did. Oh, there's the link to Telestream. I knew it was in there somewhere. So I processed everything that way. I left the green screen background as a green screen rather than try to replace that. I, I thought it looked actually pretty decent, so I went with it. But in the next video, I will replace that with a different background and so on. If you are interested in Tela at all, I actually have an affiliate link now. It's tela.tv slash question mark VIA equals TFTJS. 
Tales from the Jar side. I didn't want to make anybody have to write that out. <laughs> Tales from the Jar side. It says TFDJS is the affiliate link there. And that'll give you like a 30, 35% discount if you upgrade to the pro version. Now, again, you're no obligation here. I'm just letting you know. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Help me earn a tenth of a cent. One of the big things that happened in the AI world this week is that OpenAI announced the opening of their GPT store. Here's the link to the announcement that said, announce introducing the GPT store. We're launching the GPT store to help you find useful and popular custom versions of ChatGPT. Now, I made a whole video about a, a month ago on the issues associated with trying to customize ChatGPT and having it not really behave. Now, I'll mention that video a little bit later, but at the time I did go through the process of creating my own custom GPT. And you can see there's a bunch of them listed here and new GPTs will be featured every week. And you could include your own GPT in the store just by saving it for everyone and making sure your profile is uh, enabled. And I did all that. And then this weird, vague promise, I mean, really vague. Builders can earn based on GPT usage. In quarter one, we will launch a GPT builder revenue program. As a first step, US builders, so it's restricted to the US, will be paid based on user engagement with their GPTs. It's all about engagement, right? We'll provide details on the criteria for payments as we get closer. Yeah, I'm not holding my breath. Now, they didn't say it right in here, but I do remember reading in some of the documentation that there are roughly, what, 3 million custom GPTs that already exist. If I click this little explore button, by the way, explore GPTs, you see it brings it to this page here. And then they've got some featured ones at the top, which they're gonna get a lot of clicks. And then the trending ones, presumably they'll get a lot of clicks too. I remember I tried the, the Canva one and it was terrible, or that maybe that was the plugin. I don't know, I, I may look around. And then by ChatGPT, these are the ones they provide. And of course, Dolly is built in, so okay, interesting. And then these are associated with image generation and with writing and with productivity, presumably, see a lot of rep repetitions there, research and analysis, programming, which is where presumably mine would be, education and lifestyle, and that's all of them. And how would I find mine? Well, I'd have to click in the search box and you can see I already have searched for it before, so it pops right up, Mikito Mentor. Now, I don't know that it would pop up for you, <laughs> for anyone else, but that's how you would have to get to it. Now, I really should add a direct link in the newsletter to get there. I probably should have done that. Maybe I will later. But going back to the newsletter, that's the idea. So I put in this little snippet about earning money. And I said, I haven't, I don't expect to earn much because one, they haven't even said how you're going to earn money. Two, Makito Mentor has got a pretty small target audience. <laughs> I mean, it's people interested in the Makito testing tool for mock stubs and spies. And it's all about my book, the, you know, my, did I put it the list here? Yeah. Makito Made Clear, which is linked to the page at Prag Prog, you know, the Pragmatic Bookshelf. And by the way, if you do go and talk to Makito Mentor here, let me go actually go to that. You can see it here. Then you could ask it things like, where's the GitHub repository, which is fine. Or the one that you might actually want to ask it, what's a coupon code or a discount for the book? So you can try those out or try the links that are given, whatever you feel like. Okay, so still pretty small target audience. And then finally, given that there are supposed to be over 3 million custom GPTs already, I don't think I'm going to get a lot of clicks. I mean, I'm not going to rank up in that measure, you know. So my goal, my stretch goal is when they do announce the money, I would like to earn a full tenth of a cent from the massive usage that will come from all the jar heads reading this newsletter. Again, it probably would have helped if I put a link directly to it in the newsletter. That's assuming, of course, that anyone uses it at all, but hey, stranger things have happened, though not often and certainly not to me. 
I was going to promise not to spend all the proceeds in one place, but given that the proceeds will probably be significantly less than a penny, I don't think I can make that promise. Also, I can't promise to give it to charity because most charities would go, you're donating a penny, leave me alone. You know, d d go, go away. That would be an insult. So it's not clear to me that they'll even notify me if somebody uses it. I mean, how am I going to know? They didn't say anything about notifying anybody, although they do have my contact info. But if it happens, and or if you want to go ahead and use it, whoever is watching, and then let me know about it, then feel free to add a comment to this newsletter. And hey, as far as I'm concerned, feel free to lie to me about it. I don't care. <laughs> you know, it'd just be kind of fun. Um, that hey penny isn't going to earn itself. That hey penny references the link to the old, you know, I've got a hey penny song from the Animaniacs. So that's that's a really obscure reference for some people. But I did link it to the Animaniacs wiki page, if you will. But I am not also not going to promise to uh, sing the hey penny song, you know, if anybody uses this. So sorry, not not so not yet. Although, you know, I might be persuaded. If I made like half a cent, then if I made a hay penny, obviously I have to sing the hay penny song. So now I guess I've, I've com I'm committed now. Okay. This is that link to the older, the video I made older. It's like a month old called When Your Custom GPT Won't Behave. And uh, I'm actually going to make this the basis of a presentation I'm going to be doing this year called Creating Custom GPTs for Fun, Profit, and Potential Liability. The whole concept is that while it's easy enough to make these things, you have way less control over them than they seem to imply. I mean, there's no reason you can't ask completely awkward questions to my custom GPT. And not only that, you could ask it Makito questions like it did in the video, and it will get them wrong because it's ignoring information that I told it to use ahead of everything else. But what are you going to do? Okay, well, let's, that's enough of that. Let's move on to the tweets, toots, and skeets. I thought this was great. It was for those who aspire to be Indiana Jones. I saw, saw this in a toot that was about uh, someone saying they wanted to be an archaeologist. And it said, things I am not allowed to do on the dig. And I'm not going to read through this whole thing, but be my guest. I mean, really enjoy. I'm not, I'm not allowed to carry a whip. Imitating Indiana Jones in any way is forbidden. You know, uh, I'm not allowed to use my trowel as a knife. What was some other good ones? Or not allowed to kick someone into the trench and yell, this is Sparta, and on and on. <laughs> you know, I'm not allowed to call the crew gold diggers or even grave diggers, however accurate that may be. I uh, can't have flashbacks to wars I was never in. <laughs> not allowed to act like I'm possessed by the spirits of those we exhume. I'm not allowed to taunt the paleontologists. <laughs> spelling wrong, but what the heck, you know. Uh, on and on and on. It was really funny. I thought that was great. I'm not allowed to talk like a pirate. Well, that, you know, should be able to talk like a pirate. I have no idea where that post came from, unfortunately, but it's it's great. Okay, next one. Now, I thought Europe had plenty of electronic vehicles, but this post from the Terrible Maps Twitter feed, which is a great one, says map of Tesla charging stations 1437 AD, and of course there are none. It's kind of hard to have a charging station a couple hundred years before the invention of electrical charging stations, you know, before the even discovery of electricity and on that. I mean, I mean, obviously electricity was around the whole time, but Let's not get into semantics here. It's a blank map. Yes, not as many as you might have thought. Dave Wiskus is the CEO, I believe, of the Nebula, Nebula site, which I love. Here's nebula.tv. I'm not signed in in this browser, so you, this is what it would look like to you as well. May as well accept the cookies. But it's a creator-owned site that has basically videos on it like YouTube. So they don't have ads, they don't have commercials. It's all, you know, they split the subscription revenue among the creators and it's wonderful. They do a great, great job with this. And I actually am a lifetime subscriber, which is not being offered right at the moment. They only offer that sometime during the year, but it's like $5 a month. And usually they run sales on this stuff pretty frequently. If you want to wait until it's something like $25 to $30 for the whole year, I'm sure you could get that. And many creators offer um, 
coupon codes and everything. Back to the newsletter, Dave Wiskus tweeted, if I could have dinner with any person living or dead, I'd definitely pick living. <laughs> Which is one of those gags that as soon as you hear it, you go, man, I can't believe I never thought of that. Yeah, that's a good answer. And he also tweeted around the same time, human resources felt vaguely dystopian. So at Nebula, we switched to using people operations, which we shortened to peepops. <laughs> peepops. <laughs> so in case you were worried, we take ourselves too seriously. Yeah, peepops is definitely the term for HR from now on. I think that's fantastic. Uh, this is a real time saver. It looks like Clippy saying, it looks like you're trying to argue with a stranger on the internet. Would you like to turn on caps lock and disable spell check? <laughs> and I said, yes, please do so. All in caps with the spelling off and everything. Yeah. No, I would never argue with a stranger on the internet. I, I got better things to do than that, fortunately. Also, that seems to take a lot more energy than I feel like I have to give to that sort of thing. At least this is what I tell myself. It's been a while, though, since I've gotten into an argument. This one says, Happy New Year. Don't forget to increment the year in your password, right? Those people who embed the year in the password. Uh, that got a lot of replies on different password algorithms or people who are like, no, 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 I use my birth year because that way I don't have to update it. Yeah, of course, you know. I remember there was a an old show on HBO I mean, old, this is like 80s, 70s, 80s, called Not Necessarily the News. And I remember almost nothing from it. But the one thing I remember is that they had this Sniglets thing where they, they came up with words that should exist but don't. And the only one I remember was Checkuary. Checkuary is that period of the new year when you accidentally write the old year on your checks. And I did get a reply from my friend, you know, Bill Fly again saying, well, what do you call it when you write the old week on your newsletter? And I said, that was a week, week, W-E-E-W-E-A-K and then W-E-K-K. And I didn't even realize what he was saying is, hey, you did it again. <laughs> you left the old week on the newsletter. Sigh. Yep. Uh, for you youngins, checks are pieces of paper that we used to write on and sign and put in the mail to pay bills. Again, if you could imagine such a thing before everything was online, banks even would embed your account information right on the check. You know, it's great if you're giving away your routing number and all that stuff. Hey, what could go wrong? Oh, well. This one is, if you know, you know. A picture of autoexec.bat being rendered as a bat with auto-related stuff, truck sales and dealership goals in the background. And I'm like, yeah. I remember my autoexec.bat files. I had a PCXT and a PCAT with a 20 meg. Actually, no, I had a 30 meg hard drive. That's right. I had a 30 meg hard drive when everybody else had 20 megs. Hard drive. That's the total size, including the operating system. <laughs> and that's where I'd edit my autoexec.bat file in order to customize what program started when you restarted the machine. You know, you are going, yeah, right, Grandpa. Now let's get you back to bed. Yeah. Poor Harold. This tweet says it's 2030. Twitter, now named Xtube Premium Pro Plus, is run by five employees in a bunker on Elon Musk's compound. The gaming slash video slash live streaming slash podcast slash NFT platform boasts dozens upon dozens of users every month. The bunker doors open. It's Musk. He's wearing a panther fur coat. I've got it, he rasps. We should be a microblogging platform. Four of the five employees cheer. Not Harold. Harold has seen too much. Yes, poor Harold. I could picture that. No question. This one said, I always wanted one of those. Uh, this was an article in an online publication called Futurism, but I saw this news article making the rounds. Amazon is selling products with AI-generated names like, I cannot fulfill this request. It goes against open AI use policy. <laughs> I mean, look at this image right here. I'm sorry, but I cannot fulfill this request. Uh, my purpose is to provide helpful and respectful information to users, you know. And if you actually go to the site here, there's more like down here. Um, my my purpose. Oh, yeah, that's the one or that's similar to the one we just saw. 
I apologize, but I cannot complete this task. It requires using trademark brand names, which goes against open AI use policy. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Right, blah, blah, blah. Uh, apologies, but I'm unable to assist. Yeah, exactly. Or it encourages unethical behavior, no less. Oh, really? Yeah, versatile use. Our product can be used for a variety of tasks, such as task one, task two, and task three, making it a versatile addition to your household. Yeah. I mean, holy mackerel. It, you know, people are speculating that the descriptions were just generated by AI with no proofreading, which clearly is true. But I also suspect that what contributed is they're being outsourced to people who don't speak English. So they're just copying and pasting whatever they got into the form. Who knows? Okay, I've got a fever. And this says... I don't care how much cowbell we're talking about. It's not an effective treatment for a fever. Well, I beg to disagree. Here's that YouTube clip with from the old Saturday Night Live episode with, with the guys pretending to be Blue Oyster Cult writing uh, Don't Fear the Reaper and the immortal Christopher Walken playing Bruce Dickinson legend. And of course, what he wants is more cowbell, you know. I have no idea why that skit works so well, but that's what makes it great. I mean, again, I'm not a real comedian. I I'm, tend to think I'm pretty clever and a good counterpuncher. You know, I come up with stuff, but that's that's comedy, <laughs> and that's hard to do. Hey, right, there's that. And finally, I felt I had to say something about the Boeing disaster. This cartoon, which presumably came out of The New Yorker, seems about right. This is great. It's a door collapsing inwards and this is at Boeing and the stock is dropping like a rock and it says come in yeah mm -hmm. that's the plug falling out of the airplane and all that you you get it if you know you know so at any rate have a great week hope you enjoyed all that and I will play the theme song in a moment but the interesting thing going on for me this week in addition to other stuff happening is tomorrow morning I have that first course on the spring AI actual platform and this will be on the O'Reilly Learning Platform. If you're around, feel free to jump in. Please feel free to let me know you're a jarhead and we'll keep our fingers crossed and see how that goes. So good luck. Take care everybody. Now let's play that theme song. Hey there Des, it's time to tune in to Tales from the Jar, so let's begin. Java come in and spring oh my could be grab them, don't be shy. Tales from the jar side. Oh yeah Crack up in the code, let's take a ride From design patterns to the latest trends Your weekly tech post that never ends 